Is the SEC about to add more teams in this round of conference realignment? I'm chatting with former Gator and on threes Andy Staples about what's happening and what's about to happen next. Cool. Tampa Catholic. Okay. All the boys go to Jesuit and the right. girls the Catholic. Or, or Academy of the Holy Names. Yeah, well, we were all TC people. I don't know. We support Jesuit, but not Academy. I don't know. <laughs> so weird. My mom went to Tampa Catholic, and my dad went to Jesuit. So that's kind of like the compromise there. Daryl Jackson. Uh, Daryl Jackson, yeah. Kenny Kelly. Uh, yeah. There's lots of good high school football players. Now they actually have multiple four-star guys well, right well, now. So their, their coach became a – like went, ran for office and then left yeah. and then yes. came back, right? Uh huh. And I was in high school, like my freshman year, they beat Jesuit. And then they basically had three losing seasons after that while I was there. But Henriquez did come back for a while. But now the guy they have now is pretty good. And they've got yeah. some they've got some talent. And they didn't have a stadium when I was there. They do now. Oh, like wow. they, they've got kind of a good program going now. Cool. So. All right, TJ, you ready? All right, cool. All right. All right, Andy, we're going to jump right into it. We're going to talk about conference realignment. It is obviously the hot topic right now. Are we headed for super conferences? I mean, there's two super conferences right now, the Big Ten and the SEC. The question is, will it ever become I, – I keep calling it conference Pangea because <laughs> you feel like it's eventually going to coalesce. I will say the idea that Chip Kelly had the other day, and it's, it's kind of the closest – to what I see as, as a potential new reality down the road. And we're, I'm, I'm talking like 10, 15 years down the road. Because everybody's like, everybody keeps asking, when will, say, the Big Ten kick out Indiana and Northwestern? Or when will the SEC kick out Vanderbilt? I don't know that they're ever going to kick anybody out. Mm -hmm. What I could see, though, is the schools that really move the meter, the Ohio States, the Michigans, the, the basically half, you know, the top part of the SEC. So they go, you know what? We're worth more than this. We want to stop subsidizing. So we're going to go independent. And then like three weeks later, they're all in one league, like mm -hmm. a super league kind of thing, which if you, if you look at the history of the English premier league in soccer, that's kind of how that happened. It's these 20 that got together and we're like, we, we have bigger, bigger followings. We have more supporters as they'd say. And so they, they decided to get together and see what they could sell that to TV as and they got all this money from Rupert Murdoch, and, and it becomes the biggest sports league in the world. That is, That feels like a more likely outcome than, say, the Big Ten kicking out schools and the SEC kicking out schools, and then suddenly the Big Ten and SEC deciding to work together when they never have been able to before. Yeah, I don't think they're ever going to work together. So before Pangea forms, do you think the SEC expands past adding Texas and Oklahoma, like, you know, within the next five years or so? I It's a good question because, you know, you have Florida State really agitating, trying to get back to, you know, get out of the ACC, go to the SEC, the Big Ten. Clemson feels the same way, but is much less vocal about it. Miami feels the same way. North Carolina sort of does, but then they're a founding member of the ACC, so it's a little complicated there. But here's my thing with the SEC. The 16-team SEC product is still better than the 18-team Big Ten product as it stands now. The only thing that would maybe tip the scales is if the Big Ten could somehow get Notre Dame, and I don't think that's going to happen. I think NBC is going to pay Notre Dame. I think as long as there are at-large spots in the college football playoff and actually – with this con conference consolidation, there may be even more. That's great for Notre Dame staying independent. So unless you were worried about them being able to get Notre Dame, I don't think you have to worry about them being a, a you know better as a product. So if yeah. you're the SEC, just roll with this product you have because it. I got to be honest, after, beyond 16, it doesn't even feel like one league anymore. You know, yeah. when we were growing up, the ACC had nine teams. The SEC had 10. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I'm used to as a league. If you have 18 teams or 20 teams, you're two leagues. Yeah, you are. I mean, you are. I'm also a little hung up here where you said when we were growing up, because I would like to point out true, that I yeah, you are You are like 10 years younger than me. This is true. So yeah. when I was growing, when old people like <laughs> me were growing up. All right. So with the 12-team playoff, is there – even a benefit to expansion? Or do you think that it, that just honestly makes the SEC regular season harder without any actual gain? Yeah, I, I think you just look at it from brand, a brand standpoint. 
And I, you know, I understand why the league would want North Carolina and Virginia to add to the footprint. But I, mm-hmm. I look at it from a the standpoint of a helmet schedule. Like, the, remember what you used to have a, as a magnet on your fridge, the whole conference schedule with all the helmets. Yeah. The only two helmets for me, well, there's three helmets. There's three helmets for me that if you added them to the SEC, I would watch all those games. And that is Clemson, Florida State, and Notre Dame. Those three, I'm watching all those games. Maybe Miami, maybe, but probably not. So that's all I feel like would be additive in terms of making a better football product. And that's really what you got to think about it like is – are you making games that the majority of America wants to watch on television? It, you know, I, I understand where the SEC is coming from. They still run a cable network, expanding the footprint. North Carolina and, and Virginia would be geographically contiguous. It all makes sense. But it, does a North Carolina-Arkansas game excite you? Probably not. Does a Clemson-Arkansas game excite you? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So, I mean, I think out of those schools that you mentioned, Florida State is the one that I think UF fans would have the hardest time wrapping their head around. They're not yeah. fond of the idea of FSU and the SEC. But do you think that UF could realistically block FSU from joining? I don't think it would be just UF. I think Florida, Georgia, Auburn, Alabama, LSU would all have objections to that because they all have to recruit against Florida State. And mm-hmm. you see that Mike Norvell is doing a very good job right now. You don't want them, if you're Florida or if you're any of those schools, to get back to full strength. Because if they are full strength, we've seen what they can be at full strength. And that's really good. So I would I would expect those schools to try. But I also think it's more pragmatic. If Greg Sankey were to come to those schools and say, hey, look, this makes us a better product. This will get ESPN to give us some more money. They're going to go, okay. Because the schedule is going to be hard anyway. You look at it. There's no, there's no way around playing a tough schedule with the the league they have now. Adding more to it, it's going to be tough. But but also in the the twelve team playoff era, there are going to be nine and three teams that make the playoff. Like you're yeah. not going to have to go undefeated or or have only one loss to make the playoff. So we're going to look at at what makes a great team differently it's going to be more about who did you beat when did you play them how did you know it's it's not as much did you go undefeated because a lot of times now going undefeated is basically you got lucky on your schedule and didn't didn't have to play anybody who could beat you but that's not that's not satisfying that doesn't make you prove anything to earn your way into a a chance at playing for a national championship playing a tough schedule does and probably gets you ready to for the grind. Because think about the, the the 12-team playoff. If you're not one of the four teams with a bye, you've got to win four games to win the national title against the best teams in the country. You better be tested at that point. We'll get right back to Andy, but I wanted to take a moment to thank all of you for helping me hit 5,000 subscribers. It was a huge personal goal of mine, and I'm proud of the community and the family we've built here in under six months' time. Here's to even more growth. Let's hit 10,000 by Christmas. Do you think that the SEC may wait and see if the playoff committee does in fact reward strength of schedule before they consider expanding? Because honestly, in the past, so you think just back to last year, I don't know that strength of schedule was rewarded in the same way that it it could have been or maybe even should have been. It it hasn't been because people still can't get – they can't wrap their brains around, well, we can't put a two-loss team. Yes, you can. A a two-loss team by the end of the season might be the best team in the country. You know, I go back to like 2012, the year uh, Johnny Manziel won the Heisman. Like if there had been a bigger playoff, Texas A&M would have torched people in that playoff. And they had two right. losses. So that's that's the thing you got to consider. We we have to rewire our brains. Now, as far as the SEC goes, I think the prudent move is wait and just sit, watch, see what happens, because you've already got the best product. Right. It's it's there is nobody who will have a better product. The only way you move quickly is if somehow ESPN's like, okay, we have thought about this, and if you were and I realize ESPN is probably not going to say this directly, but if it, if word gets to the SEC that ESPN is like, we will pay you more and and considerably more 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 than the the per team you're getting now, 
if you add this and this, then you add that. You do that. Right. But right. if you have no guarantee of that and there's no reason to, to get bigger and logistically have to deal with all of the stuff you're going to have to deal with, because right now they have a pretty good plan for the 16 teams. They, you know, they have that eight-game schedule bridge in 2024. They're going to go to nine in 2025. It's the only thing that makes mathematical sense. So I think that's the... That's the thing you got to think about is, is at what point are you potentially diluting the product, which is a good product? And, and that's, I, I had a, an AD texting me about, you know, worried about what we did to the regular season with the playoff. I'm like, you, you helped the regular season. And this is one that's in the, in the power too. Like you helped the regular season by adding better programs and getting rid of the, the boring divisions. You're going to have better regular season games week after week after week. That sure. matters. I mean, the SEC schedule for next season is incredible. There's great games every single banger um, after banger. Oh. And if you it, like, especially like Florida and Georgia are prime examples of this. Their fans were tired of seeing the same teams come through the stadium. But a lot of that is because they have the neutral site game, so it it sure. changes the dynamics of that. But think about this: Florida's going to get Oklahoma. Georgia's going to get Texas. Both of them are going to see. Texas A&M more often. Georgia will see LSU more often. Florida will see Auburn more often. This all matters. Yeah. So what do you think that conference realignment does to traditional games, though? Does it hurt college football in your eyes from that sense? It depends on the, the games, what's happening with the games. I mean, this round of realignment has, has brought two rivalries that, that are great back mm -hmm. as conference games. you got Texas and Texas A&M coming back and BYU-Utah, which... If you've never watched a BYU-Utah game, you think Florida and Georgia people hate each other. You think Alabama and Auburn people hate each other. No, 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 no. Those people hate each other. So yeah. I, I do think it. we're getting a little bit back. But yes, it does suck when you see some of the, the traditional games. Like It will be a crime if the Apple Cup is not a game anymore. If Washington and Washington State don't play. And you know, I, I, as a Florida grad, I, I've been getting a little feisty with people on the West Coast who are like, well, what are they going to do? They can't play that game now. I'm like, they can't play that game in November. I'm like, do you people not understand that Florida, Florida State is a game that exists? Clemson, South Carolina is a game that exists? Exactly. Last game of the season every single year. Well, thank you for joining me. Congrats on the new role at On3. Super excited to continue to watch your stuff there. Been a longtime fan. Tell us a little bit more about the move, uh, what you're doing, and where folks can find your content. So we are doing a show pretty much every day. So Sunday through Thursday, we're, we're doing a show, and it, it premieres on the On3 YouTube page at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And okay. so uh, most of those shows I'm doing live. Now, some of them, some of them are not live because we've got to get everything recorded and, and have different schedules with our interviews with coaches. But uh, a lot of them I'm doing live. You can interact with me during the show. And it's, it's been a lot of fun so far because, you know, there's just not a lot of college football shows anymore. Like ESPN doesn't make those anymore. So we want to give you a show you can watch. And then everything we do is then cut up into segments and you can find it however you need it. We're going to have it on YouTube, we'll have it on X. I can't call it, I, I, it's Twitter. I, but it's so weird. Twitter, I know, I just, it feels so strange. But but we'll have those videos there. And then if you want to listen in podcast form, we're on every major podcast platform. So however you want the show, you can get it. And you know we'll, we'll try to make sure it is serving the real college football fans because that's what, you know, this is what I'd be talking about with my friends. If I didn't have, if I didn't do it for a living. So this conversation we just had, we would have had on the phone. Like it is no different. And so that's what I want the show to be. And we have lots of coaches coming on. We've, we've had a lot of fun the last week with some of the, like Biff Pogey, the, the coach at Charlotte, just fascinating, yeah. the former hedge fund manager, like learning about him. Uh, I had Billy Lucci from Texags telling stories that didn't make the Johnny Manziel documentary. Um, I just got done interviewing Sonny Dykes for Sunday's show. Uh, he's talking about how how special last year's team was, and what do you how do you follow that up with a you know with a team that just made it to the national title game? It's it's really interesting. Oh, he also talks about his 455 pound freshman offensive lineman, which Florida fans you know you've watched Des Watson, you know how this works. So yeah. it, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. 
did you tell Sonny Dykes that there's some film out there that he can watch in areas where he can work on it? Because uh, we all saw that in 4K in the national championship game. Oh, but, yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Tell everybody um, what your Twitter handle is or X handle. X. Uh, Andy underscore Staples on X on Instagram and then Andy Staples on Facebook. All right. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Allie. Thank you so much to Andy Staples for joining me. We have more content with him coming soon. If you are jacked about this season coming up and wanting more information, click right here.